what I'm doing for this problem. If you guys look at this, um, let's say I want to evaluate for sine 19 pi over 6. If I want to evaluate for 19 pi over 6, a couple things you guys can look at this and say, well, we know that, you know, here's our initial side, here is pi, and if I'm going to go over sixth of them, right, I told you guys to break them up into sixths. Right? I know this is not equal, but you could say this is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. How do I mess this up? 8 pi. Yeah. 6 pi over 6. So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. Ooh. Where am I messing up? You have to erase it because you put two too many letters. It's far more. Let's go erase that one. I'll just, just do this correctly. Okay. Thank you. You're just redeeming the code. So if I want to see what the one sixth is, okay, again, what I can do is break it up into thirds. Okay, then what I'll do is, so that's one third, but remember I need to get six over six. So I'll break all these up into halves. Yay. So one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi over six, right? And you guys can keep on going around the circle all the way till you find out where 19 pi over six is. Then you have to find the coordinate point for that, right? However, what I want to show you is, if you guys notice, when I go all the way around the circle, I get back to where I started to, right? I just did a revolution, kind of like when we talk about coterminal angles. When you go all the way around, you're back at where you started, right? Yeah. So if you keep on going around and around, it's redundant. The only thing we care about is, where do we end up at, right? Yeah. So what we're going to do is, we're going to rewrite this problem as what we call a period, as an eight as a, um, a period. So what I want to say is, I want to break this up. Well, what is one revolution going around? Half of it's 6 pi over 6. What's going all the way around? 12 pi over 6. So if I say 12 pi over 6, then what else would I have to add to 12 pi over 6 to get 19 pi over 6? You can say you can add 7 pi over 6. Well, like we said, um, when you use a period of an aid, what you're doing is we really don't care about this, right? This is just taking us all the way around the circle. So this ends up equaling sine the same thing as 7 pi over 6. So that's really what we want to evaluate for because 12 pi over 6 is just going to take us all the way around the circle. It's not going to do anything extra for us. And if I want to break up the bottom, because this is into my 6, So if this is 6 pi over 6, this point is going to be my 7 pi over 6. Right? And then I need to determine, well, how do I know what 7 pi over 6 is? I told you guys to memorize what this point is, right? What is um, pi over 6? And it's going to be square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So that's my x and y coordinate. Well, if you think about it, to get to this point, if these two are both positive, in the, fourth, in the third quadrant, your x and y's are both negative. So this coordinate point is now going to be negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Does everybody see how these are reflections of each other? They reflect the x-axis, and they also reflect the y-axis. Therefore, my two coordinate points are both negative. So then if I want to find the sine of this, um, sine of 7 pi over 6, is equal to a negative one half. All right. So all this is is just kind of a little shortcut. It's nothing really new. It's just letting you know when you have when you have, when I'm giving you an angle and it's greater than two pi, you can kind of factor out that two pi and just evaluate for what's you know added into it. Make sense? Good. Okay. That's it. And one last thing I want to show you.